up, brother? I'm doing fine. How are you? Very good, man. Welcome back. Thank you so much. So here we are. We're back. Episode three. We are here to talk today about Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor three. It's happening this week, right? This week, sir. That's awesome. Fight week. Fight week. There's something really beautiful about fight week, you know? The energy, um, the anticipation, the the press, the interviews, the excitement of it all. I love it. Really, really I cool. do as well. Uh, talking about interviews, I haven't seen much lately. Have you seen anything on that? For for Connor, no. Connor's radio silence, man. He's, wow. He's not been doing anything for this. He, uh, he is not... I guess publicly said it, but he's basically just said, I'm focused and I won't be talking to the media all through this camp. Unusual for Connor, right? Who is very, very outspoken. He likes to promote himself. So he's kind of in a nutshell now, which I'm surprised to see yeah. because I would have wished to see the old Connor back. Ah, absolutely, man. Connor with money is, is leagues less than Connor without money. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that fire that he had prior to fortune and fame and millions of dollars before the, the um, Floyd Mayweather fight. It was just this hungry, driven animal that just wanted to get out there and take people's heads off. I completely agree. I, I think I saw him at a certain moment in the first fight with Dustin. He had this madness in his eyes and he was just eager to you know achieve his goals he knew exactly what he wanted he predicted the fight he predicted the knockout he predicted the round he just knew it right and i i don't see that anymore and i'm just wondering what kind of con is going to show up this week yeah i mean the the face off before they fought the first time he had this sparkle in his eyes there was a smile he put the hand out in front of Dustin's face Dustin slapped it away yeah like there was grit you know now now it's just a, a guy with money and power and fame and fortune and he used to live in Dustin's head right before the fight so yeah at the first fight that is now it's just nothing yeah I think he he let go a big part of his game which is going under his enemy's skin or his opponent's skin Apparently, they've become friends or not. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just wondering what and who we are going to see when he comes out of the... Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, the shadow. a lot of it has to do with the fact that there was this animosity and living in headspace, as you say, in the first fight. Um, the, the, the Dana's video log that he put out where Dustin was saying, I, I hate this guy, you know, that, that was raw emotion. I think that cost Dustin the first fight, but you know, it, it just, it, there was something in the, in the actual moment where he's like, I hate this guy. I want to take this guy out. And he did, he tried and Connor got the best of him. Yeah. And now in the second fight, uh, they were friendly. They were talking about the whiskey and the hot sauce, yeah. the fact that they've got kids it's a different it's a different animal it's a different situation to be in and then that fight happens they were friends and hugging and high-fiving and then the issue with the the donation to the charity came up and then the twitter bitching started yeah that's that's just weird to me because i'm missing the old connor and actually i'm just wondering who took his place currently yeah in the ufc we do we do not have this persona anymore True, very true. You met Connor. Before. I did meet him, yeah. I met him in London at the Cage Warrior show when one of my fighters was fighting there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, shook his hand, took a picture, spoke to him. He was down to earth and yeah. Have you met him? I met him. I think I might have told you the story. Oh. Uh, he's not a fan of mine. I'm not a fan of his. Uh, he told me to go fuck myself one night. I gave a suggestion. I'm not going to tell the full story. Yeah. But I gave a suggestion to a particular issue that was happening. And I was told to mind my own business and I minded my own business. And that was it. Okay. Sounds Irish to me. 100%, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not a Conor McGregor fan. I never was. Uh, before fame, after when he became huge in the UFC, uh, I'm just not a huge fan of him, but I'm a fan of his work. I'm, I respect him as a fighter. He keeps people interested. He gets them involved, like whether it's financially or otherwise. Um, he's, he's 
they're, they're, he's so good they tried to tame him yeah they, they wouldn't let him fight during the pandemic no crowd for obvious reasons they're harnessing john jones because they don't want another conor mcgregor yeah but you know? john jones is off the stage right now isn't he yeah 100 percent. um so the first fight conor wins by tko yeah i guess it was a ko it, it was, was a, KO. a ko you're right he was face down yes sir um some some beautiful karate work karate stance taekwondo stance throwing the uh he started with that hook kick hook kick it is oh man and he was throwing those karate kicks and he was so energetic but i think the big um the big issue might have been that they fought at the 145 45, yeah, so that's featherweight right whereas they fought now in the welterweight i'm not sure if the extra weight is bothering was that that was Connor. a 155 right i don't uh 155 155, thank 155 you. Yeah. so it's lightweight yeah dustin actually wanted it at um, welterweight but they so they still met oh yeah, yeah that was the point yeah he was fighting at catch weight with nate yeah true so i'm wondering if that extra weight is bothering him if he had some kind of injury i didn't hear him making any kind of excuses after the fight so i'm wondering what happened mm -hmm. might have been his knee he threw one kick in the second fight which but mm -hmm. the first fight he was so energetic he went out and you know when you think about the kicks that he was throwing he was going to the head to the middle section of the body and then he would attack uh also the legs so he kept Poirier guessing is he coming with the arms so with, with his hands he's gonna throw the kicks and I think that that was a big 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 um like big obstacle for Poirier to overcome which he couldn't and that's why he got caught at the end yeah and even then Connor wasn't this persona so it wasn't like oh my god I'm fighting the Connor McGregor yeah. this was his fourth fight I think in the UFC might have been yeah yeah I and can look it up just the case of like he just got I think he was emotionally invested um the whole week Connor was in his head the the not the press con yeah the press conference when he got in his head there they were facing off after they were like bitching back and forth the initial beginning of the fight uh, where Connor did the thing in his face um but then that fight ended they both went their separate ways we never heard anything more yeah fast forward a few years they're on this collision course they both have losses to Khabib um it was a spectacular fight the second time around yeah it was I mean Connor was crisp striking he did well to avoid you you even gave him the first round he, he, he I did uh, when I judge um when I judge the fights I look at the cage control I look at the defensive uh, as well as the offensive part. So I saw Dustin going for a takedown. Didn't do much there because Connor actually um, butt scooted backwards to the cage, mm -hmm. stood up, reversed it several times, and he was able to disengage. So that means um, Connor was somehow working on his wrestling. And I'm wondering if he has done that now as well. Um, but yeah, the first round, in my opinion, with the Chris striking. So you, you're talking about how much damage do you land. And those leg kicks, those calf kicks, they actually, um, in my opinion, capitalized in the second round. So in the first round, I, I gave it a slight nod to Conor McGregor. Right. Makes so sense. On my scorecard, he was one round up. Not to mention those shoulder strikes in the clinch. That was beautiful. Uh, Dustin initiated it and then Connor just like said no this is how you do it caught him completely punched him in his in yeah. his nose yeah I mean that was, was awesome it was beautiful I think he landed like four or five of them yeah uh, they disengaged Connor had a lot of success with striking uh, Dustin's southpaw so his left hand was down a lot but he could get away with that because Connor's southpaw too yeah he got lucky in that sense second round the kicks took over man those kicks landed and you could see connor was his demeanor you watch the fight on youtube again connor's got this look in his face he gets hit with a couple of those kicks in the second round and you just see his face change he's like oh those kicks can't he take. aged in five minutes <laughs> true he looked like an old man i'm sorry to say it but he did mm -hmm. he did he 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 went without any emotions into the fight and i think that's the wrong way you have to be fired up for the fight yeah otherwise it, you are approaching this as a sparring session yeah. so in my opinion um we need to see a switch we need to see 
focus switch. We need to see some hunger, some, I don't know. Let's let's see what is, Absolutely. what kind of con- corner comes out. Who knows? No, you, no one's ever going to know until the night. Like, as I said before, with Connor, the Connor before money is what he needs to, that, that, that mentality. Yeah. That's what he needs to bring. So how can you achieve that when you have all the money that you need? Give all more? the money away, sir. Yeah. Give, give it, it all me. away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, who knows, man? Who knows how he's going to dig this out? He could go into complete isolation for this training camp and come out um a crisp hungry fighter like both of them here's my take on it they took this fight for one reason each dustin took it for money yeah connor took it for revenge so what is better that's the question there you go to me revenge is a way better motivator than money right because in the next fight you're gonna earn money win lose poria has some fights left in him even on his record if he keeps losing and winning and losing he can become this um you know gatekeeper of the ufc um lightweight division i guess or welterweight let's see he's 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 getting older he might want to move up but yeah so the second round i was really surprised to see how many kicks um connor just let unchecked i think he checked one or two kicks the whole fight what i was really surprised about is he started to catch those leg kicks so why would you bend and i think this needs to be taken into into the consideration for the upcoming fight if he reaches down he's completely exposed for a counter kick or another kind of kick and let's talk about later about the strategy how each of the fighters might win and i'm thinking you're not gonna like my view on who is going to win this fight fight prediction here we go Conor McGregor, if I, I, I am going to correct this after I've seen him coming out of his frozen state, right? But for, to me, a focused, reshaped, um, retrained Conor McGregor, it is. And I think he might even retire after this fight or after his next fight. Right. And how, I'm not, I, I don't think so. What, no, no, I'm just going to ask, how is Conor going to win this fight? What's your prediction? It's going to be a knockout. Knockout. If we are unlucky, it's going to be a decision because that's how we came out to an ATS. He's going to have a really focused, uh, good game plan. We might be into the boring point finding for the five rounds because if he took his training camp seriously, he worked on his cardio. So that is my prediction. KO in the third round or we're going, to, we're going for the decision. But I'm going with the KO in the third. KO third round prediction over here. Um, I'm going to say... I'm going to say that it's going to be a replica of the second fight. I'm going to say TKO, Dustin. uh, He goes straight back to those calf kicks. Whether they're checked or not, even when they're checked and they land in the right spot, they still hurt. I've been kicked so many times in my legs and I've never done a kickboxing class or a Muay Thai class. Even when you check a kick, I learned how to check kicks and I'm like, really? This still hurts. I think... Dustin says, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Kick him in the leg, wear him down, and then go to work with your boxing. You see, this is where I think that Connor has more tools to beat Dustin. I haven't seen a big increase in Dustin's um, repertoire of his techniques between the first and the second fight. He is a dirty boxer. He doesn't know how to strike. I'm sorry. He does know to a uh, certain degree, but if you're a good striker, you see those wild punches uh, coming through. He's losing his uh, composure sometimes, right? He's not a clean striker. So because why? He's a grappler. Conor McGregor in his first fight showed to us what kind of leg kicks he has. He has In his upcoming fight with um, Mayweather, he was training the hands. So now think about what he has added to his repertoire. So to me, Conor McGregor to win needs to refocus and he needs to regain his condition, right? His fight condition. I'm not talking about biking when you come off the yacht and pull out your bike with three bodyguards and you're biking around the beach. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about swimming. I'm not talking about running. I'm talking about fight condition, which means wrestling, boxing, kicking. I wish to see Conor McGregor kick more because he's going to throw 
Dustin completely off. Right. I almost said Justin again. Justin. Justin Timberlake. Justin Poirier. Justin Poirier, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So that's my opinion. Yeah. Honestly, I might rethink when I've seen Conor McGregor come out this week again. Yeah. I mean, what you're saying is pretty valid. Wrong, but pretty valid. Um, but you got to remember, it's only been six months. There's not a lot you can do in a, a six month time period. Conditioning. Conditioning, I guess. I mean, I've come off um, a, a drinking session and been in McDonald's and got a phone call. Hey, can you fight tomorrow? And I knocked the guy out in the second round. Yeah. You know, I've been at my physical peak and I've been gassed after two minutes. So sometimes conditioning is a little bit of a strange topic because the sometimes the evidence doesn't, you know, hold any water mma mats doesn't work it don't work either right the mma gods what's that phrase the mma gods don't give a fuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it. to me dustin beating connor is you take that threat out of the second fight with the calf kicks and you change your plan completely but you just have you you have connor's attention with those kicks so i think Dustin is going to grapple a little bit more. He's going to set him up. He's going to bring those low kicks in. And when Connor retrieves, he might just shoot for the takedown. He just might, might to push him back to the fence. Because I think that Connor is not going to go into this fight thinking, oh, let me just have it the same way. He's going to be scared. He felt those kicks. He doesn't want to have that anymore. He doesn't want to embarrass himself in front of the crowd. So I think we see this big, big, big threat with the kicks from Dustin implemented in a completely new game plan. I think we see a completely new game plan from Dustin Poirier and AT&T, uh, by the way, top team. Yeah, I, I just, I can't agree with that because I just see Dustin, if it's not broken, don't fix it kind of scenario. I, I kicked the legs off him and it completely nullified his whole game plan. Yeah. Let's do that again. I don't know. Do you want to put some money on it? We I'm put, going to bet. We put a bet on? Yeah, no. Let's say 50 I'm, bucks. No, I'm not betting. You don't want to put it's a bet It's against on. my religion. You're not confident with the My fight. religion is keep the money. Oh, well, there you go. I'm not betting. You're not betting. Okay. Oh, we can do it for a lunch. Let's do a lunch. Okay. <laughs> Let's do a lunch then. Whoever pays. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm taking, uh, you're taking Connor. I'll take Dustin. How, How does Dustin win and when? TKO second, second round. Second I'm going to keep it the same. I don't think it, nothing changes. Knockout third round by Conor McGregor. Yeah. The following assertions may or may not be true. It's going to be a knee to his face. I'm telling you, left knee to, the, uh, to Let's see. Dustin's face. Let's see. And the winner fights um, Charles Oliveira. All right. I would imagine that's the case. And the loser fights? It depends. We can go many different routes with this. I think Dustin has many options. I think Conor is towards the end of his career. Yeah. I think Conor fights... Um, let's say Connor wins. Yeah. Connor fights Charles Oliveira, wins the title, retire, completely retires. Connor loses. Him and Nate Diaz are on losing streaks, but yeah. that trilogy is always there too. And they're both out. Yeah. Let's make some final cash and then out the door. I would prefer that. Yeah. Route. Dustin has four or five more fights left, I think. But it depends. It depends on what they want to do, how much damage they take, how quickly Charles Oliveira wants to defend the belt. But I think let's just keep it for this fight. I'm taking Dustin Poirier. Nothing changes. TKO second round. Calf kicks are a big factor in this fight too. Let's see what happens, guys. Let's see. Leave your prediction in the comments. I'm really curious what you think. Who's going to win and how? Absolutely, man. Give us your feedback. Make sure you subscribe. For the love of God, please subscribe. We need subscribers for the reasons I said in my last podcast. Um, like, share, tell your friend. Have them tell two friends. Let's get this going, guys. We need traction here. Let's go. Rocking. So, Evo, thank you very much for joining me once again. Thank you for having me here, brother. And don't forget, Connor wins.